In the past year, the world has had its eyes on the policing departments and policing system in the United States, and for good reason. We always heard that police departments were up to no good, usually through the medium of film and TV. But nowadays, we have cameras in our pockets and an endless web to share experiences, photos, and footage of the shady things that police do. Today we are going to discuss one of those cases. It's a case that I've covered before, but since I was still a young YouTuber at the time and I didn't really put that much work into it, I wanted to give it another look and share with you what I have found. So today, we're going to discuss the eerily disturbing case of John Lang. If our eyes see it, if our cameras capture it, does it exist? Enter a realm where fact meets fiction, where nightmares come to life. Do you believe? Dark Mysteries John Lang was a former US Marine who lived in Fresno, California. He was an activist and an outspoken critic of the local Fresno Police Department and the local government. In 2015, however, while out at a local store, he noticed that the police were in the parking lot and that they were acting odd. Now for context, the Fresno PD at the time was very, very corrupt and had a very bad reputation. The chief of police and five other officers were arrested on drug charges. After the chief was let out on bail, an officer that was not involved in the drug charges went to confront the chief at his house because he was furious of what the chief and the other five had done. That same night, the officer was found dead near the chief's house. He had a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the chest. The family of the officer and many locals of Fresno believe that the PD covered it up. So when John Lang decided to look more into that odd behavior in the parking lot, his life would change forever. John Lang would end up uncovering a scam that the Fresno Police Department had been running for years, where the police would scan license plates in parking lots of local businesses and usually in lower income neighborhoods. If they were to get a hit from one of the license plates showing that the person who owned the car had a violation of some sort, they would wait for them to drive away, follow them a couple blocks out, pull them over, and claim to randomly come upon that person, and then proceed to bust them for whatever violation they had. This is obviously very corrupt, and maybe even illegal, because this move was motivated by one thing, and one thing only, and yes, you probably already guessed it, money. And unfortunately, this scam disproportionately affected the low-income residents of Fresno. During his investigation, he also discovered that the local newspaper, the Fresno Bee, was sharing data of users who were critical of the local Fresno government and the Fresno PD. Lang, who regularly posted on the Fresno Bee, broke the story with evidence to back up the claims of corruption that he uncovered. The thing is, somebody that worked for the paper named Judy Murray logged his IP and gave his address to the Fresno PD. After this, things began to become strange for John Lang. He began to believe that he was being stalked by the Fresno PD, so he began to upload videos to a YouTube channel. The videos were CCTV footage of what he claimed were the Fresno PD stalking him, intimidating him, and harassing him, and possibly planning a break-in. He also claimed that sometimes when returning home and checking the footage, there would be 20 to 30 minutes missing. Was the Fresno PD stalking John Lang, or was it all in his head? Well, let's take a look at some of the footage and see for ourselves. In the first uploaded video on John Lang's channel, it captures a white truck, which he claims to belong to someone who works for the Fresno PD, and that shortly after, he got a hang-up call from a number connected to the Fresno PD. This next clip is what John Lang describes as the Fresno PD conditioning his dog so they are able to enter his property more easily. Then he captures what is said to be Fresno PD using a thermal camera or a capturing device of some sort to see if he is home. Around this time, he starts to report that someone had been breaking into his house while he was gone which he claimed to have been the Fresno PD. And 
In this next clip, a man is caught walking straight up to his house, looking around as if he were looking for something, and then walking back the exact same way he came, texting as he did so. So this could all be in his head, right? Maybe he's just being paranoid. Well, this next clip is where things start to get scary. Lang says he was at a nearby house with two of his neighbors, one of which is a registered sex offender. Now this is odd to him because he was never invited to this house before. He also claims that both of these men were police informants. When he started to feel uncomfortable, he decided to leave, but the two men were trying to stop him. When he reached his property, they prevented him from entering. They were blocking his gate, so he had to end up climbing over it. Lang claims that they were communicating with the police the entire time, as to alert whoever was inside his house to get out. When he finally does enter his property, he noted that his front door lock, computer, and printer have been tampered with. This next clip shows what could be more police intimidation. The last clip that John Lang uploaded to his YouTube channel showed someone trying to break into his car. And that was it. That was the last thing that John Lang posted to his channel. Now Lang believed that all this was happening because he had exposed the corruption going on in the Fresno Police Department. And can you blame him? Like I said at the beginning, the department chief and five others were arrested for drug charges, so they were corrupt, and the Fresno B leaked info to them of users who didn't approve of what they were doing. After all of this, and the last clip I showed you was uploaded to Lang's channel, he took to Facebook with a very eerie message. If I turn up missing or dead tomorrow, remember this then. I think I saw a couple people sneak out the outside of the door into the building when it was parked in the carport this afternoon. I've been causing the city of Fresno a lot of problems recently, which I now regret. And on January 20th, 2016, John Lang was found in his burning home with multiple stab wounds. He then later died at the hospital. So he predicted his death. And during the week of the 20th leading up to his death, he had been posting on Facebook more and more that this feeling was only getting worse. An autopsy was done on John Lang's body. It was first reported that he had multiple stab wounds, some on his back, and some on his chest, and soot was found in his lungs. The coroner called it a suicide, and that the cause of death wasn't the stab wounds, but the smoke inhalation. Later to be corrected and clarified that all the stab wounds were in his chest. At first glance, the story and footage that surrounds the John Lang case is almost clear cut, but while I looked at the footage, I did notice that some of them were odd, but were they really? The thermal camera clips have been theorized to be just a normal camera. Maybe some film students liked the house and wanted to get a gorilla style b-roll and that's all to it. The dog clips, well, it could have just been a random person walking his dog. So could all of this just been in John Lang's head and he just let the paranoia get the best of him? Or is there something to it? Did the Fresno Police Department murder John Lang for exposing their corrupt behavior? and do all this to make him look crazy so when he did die, it would all be chalked up to another suicide. Well, you remember that carpet cleaning van from one of his videos and from the last post that he made on Facebook? Well, if you try to look up this company on Google, you'll quickly find out that it doesn't exist and that all the details around it are fake. The first review from this company was made on January 25th, 2016, five days after John Lang was found dead. 
Also, the building where this business was supposedly located was bought back in 2012 and hasn't been used since. Also, if you look at the autopsy report, you can see that two Fresno police detectives were present for the autopsy, which is customary, but if you remember, the original autopsy that was given to reporters was that he was stabbed in the back and the chest. So was John Lang murdered for exposing the corruption of the Fresno Police Department? Or was he just a paranoid man that ended up committing suicide over it? Let me know what you think in the comments below and tell me your theories of what could have happened to John Lang. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.